It is now my honor to introduce to you Arun Alagapan. Arun is president and founder of Advantage Testing, president of the board of trustees of the Advantage Testing Foundation, and co-creator of the Advantage Testing Foundation Math Prize for Girls competition. Arun graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Princeton University and went on to graduate from Harvard Law School, where he served as editor of the Harvard International Law Journal. While at Harvard, Arun was also an instructor in the math department. He was awarded a certificate of distinction for outstanding teaching of undergraduates from the dean of Harvard College. Soon after, Arun came to his senses and realized that his true calling was as an educator. And in 1986, he founded Advantage Testing. Arun was one of seven educators featured in New York Magazine's The Influentials, a cover story identifying more than 200 professionals whose ideas, power, and sheer will were changing New York. In 2011, he was profiled in the Wall Street Journal for helping to find the next generation of leaders who will bring diversity, new ideas, compassion, and a different kind of leadership to institutions. Arun has personally tutored, mentored, and guided thousands of students through their academic careers. He has made outstanding tutoring available to thousands more through the Advantage Testing Foundation's partnerships with such things as LIDA, the Leadership Enterprise for a Diverse America, and Prep for Prep, and through its own flagship programs, our Math Prize for Girls, and trials, the training and recruitment initiative for admission to leading law schools. So, will you join me in a very warm welcome to Arun Alagapan. So I went to a party last night, and I met this guy in a square hat named Pi. At first, I thought he was just friendly because he had this constant smile on his face. But then Pi went on and on for what seemed like forever. He talked in circles about the connection between transcendental meditation and half marathons. I mean, he just wasn't making any sense. So I reluctantly came to the conclusion, Pi was irrational. It was a math party, so everyone brought along something math-related. One suspicious-looking fellow brought along some graph paper. He was definitely plotting something. Finally, I met this sociable woman who was wandering around the party with a big number seven on her shirt. Must be a Roman numeral, I thought. Okay, enough. <laughs> good, good afternoon, girls. So how was that little quiz you took this morning? For those of you returning, it seems as if it gets harder year after year. You can thank Ravi for that. Speaking of thanks, I could devote the rest of the day to thanking everyone who contributed to the program. Instead, let me ask you to take a close look at your programs this evening. Of course, I do want to recognize a few individuals. MIT President Raphael Reif, MIT Dean of Science Michael Sipser, and the brilliant Dr. Michelle Gomans, head of MIT's math department. Also, the entire MIT community, including volunteers, speakers, and a cappella singers for partnering with us in what many academics, including those at MIT, have called the world's preeminent math competition for girls. Let me add my thanks to today's keynote speaker, Dr. Moon Du Chin. And I earlier mentioned Dr. Ravi Bopana, co-founder and director of the AT Foundation Math Prize. Did you know that Ravi didn't finish his PhD at MIT until he turned the ripe old age of 22? What a slacker. 
Thanks to Maria DiBuono Holmberg, our associate director, who each year brings her exceptional dedication, her good cheer, her empathy, and deep intelligence to this complicated undertaking. And of course, we honor those legions of parents, teachers, and coaches without whom the dreams of many of today's contestants would likely remain just that, dreams. These girls are here today not only because of their undeniable talent and hard work, but also because of everything you do to support them. Thank you, and welcome to the 10th Annual AT Foundation Math Prize. For the past 10 years, we've been awarding the largest math prize for girls in the world. For the past 10 years, contestants have been sharing insights, defying stereotypes, forging close friendships, and asserting new models for leadership. And for the past 10 years, I've been telling you corny math jokes. This 10th year contest is indeed a milestone, and every milestone inv invites us to reflect upon the past. So let's review what you've achieved as we look forward to the road ahead. A decade ago, the AT Foundation launched the Math Prize for Girls in response to a persistent and troublesome gender gap in the STEM fields. We wanted to encourage promising female mathematicians to showcase their ability in a positive environment and to reward their success. We also hoped participants would cultivate a strong network with their peers and future colleagues. Well, over the past 10 years, the Math Prize community has proved even more powerful than our highest original aspirations for it. To date, more than 1,600 unique contestants have tackled our challenging exams, cheered one another's accomplishments, and returned to inspire their peers to do the same. Many of our former contestants have gone on to excel in graduate school, to launch promising careers in STEM fields, and to win awards. Let me also suggest that most of you recognize that every hard-earned solution to a math problem leads to yet another beautiful problem to tackle. Sir Andrew Wiles, the extraordinary Princeton math professor who proved for Matt's last theorem, a theorem that had defied mathematical proof for 350 years, compared his experience to exploring an unlit mansion. Let me quote him. You enter the first room and it's completely dark. You stumble around, bumping into the furniture, but gradually you learn where each piece of furniture is. Finally, after six months or so, you find the light switch. You turn it on, and suddenly it's all illuminated. Then, he says, you move into the next room and spend another six months in the dark. Math at your levels, girls, takes talent, yes. It takes knowledge and intellect, but it also takes imagination and intuition, passion and persistence, commitment and confidence, and the courage to stumble around in the dark. These are the qualities we see in you. You are the world's next generation of innovators. You will make the next big breakthroughs in science, computing, astrophysics, engineering, biotechnology, and clean energy. Those of you who participated in our first few competitions are already doing so. And in the decades since we launched this prize, we are starting to see real progress. One recent study shows that women pursuing doctorates in the STEM field are now more likely to complete their PhDs than men, a striking reversal of earlier statistics. Likewise, a report by the Girl Scout Research Institute shows that 81% of girls surveyed say they are interested in pursuing a career in STEM. Did you know that Dr. Silvia Acevedo, the newly installed CEO of the Girl Scouts, is a rocket scientist whose resume includes work at NASA, IBM, Apple, and Dell? So follow her lead and keep it up, girls. Your time is now. If not now, when? If not you, who? In closing, because this is our 10th year, I thought I would leave you with 10 personal recommendations from my parents and my own teachers. I hope that at least some of them will prove useful to you. 
Number one, be cheerful. Keep an energetic and buoyant spirit in all your activities. Number two, maintain a forward look. Don't linger in the past. Keep an eye on the future that you can help build. Number three, try your best. That's the most you or anyone else can ask of you. Number four, read. Start simply and gradually increase the level and difficulty of your reading. The more and better you read, the more you'll succeed in an increasingly complex and challenging world. Number five, write. And edit your writing several times before you are satisfied or turn it into a teacher. Because the essence of good writing is rewriting. Number six, keep doing math. Math is the world's international language. And your ability to excel in this unique and powerful subject will distinguish you in any career undertaking. Number seven, ask questions. In the various settings in which I've taught, from a learning disability center in New York to students from high schools and colleges in New York, Boston, Los Angeles, San Francisco, the time my students asked me the most questions was when I was teaching math at Harvard. How do you think these students got into Harvard? They understood that asking questions shows interest and curiosity, and that curiosity results in learning. Number eight, observe the rule of three and 33. Good news spreads to three people, and bad news to 33. Avoid producing bad news and strive to create good news all around you. Life is a precious gift that we should use to contribute to the betterment of the world. Number nine, honor your parents, honor your teachers, and honor your guardians. In this age, we often forget the enormous debt of gratitude we owe to others. Remember to show appreciation and remember to show respect. Say thank you. Number 10, be generous. In whatever community you find yourself, always take up the call of helping others. Share what you have with those who are less fortunate. And do not despair at the enormity of the challenge. Remember the ancient proverb, it is better to light a single candle than to curse the darkness. So congratulations, girls, on all that you have accomplished and all that you will accomplish. May peace, happiness, and good fortune follow you always. And may the force be with you.